Welcome back to Good Moms, Bad Choices. I'm Erica. And I'm Mila. And it's Wednesday. <laughs> Happy Wednesday, y'all. Happy Wednesday. It is also the second week of Tribe July. You know, all month, well, all year, all the fucking time, but really this month, we really wanted to focus on community, friendship, and we all know that it takes a village to raise a woman, a mother, friends. It's, you really, you need people. You need your people. Um, and so it is week two, and I'm super excited because we have two really special guests. One who I just met today and really haven't said much to, right. but I'm about to we're about to dig in, girl. <laughs> <laughs> and and another friend of the of the show that's come on, we have uh, Jade yes. um, from the Get and Grown podcast, and we have Fran from the Friend Zone, hey. real life friends, by the way. Yes, which is Indeed. which I thought was really cool. I was like, how, how what, what two homies can I get? From, from pods that are really real friends in real life to come on and talk because me and Mila, we are basically married. We're in platonic love. Mm -hmm. um, we've recently discussed <laughs> even maybe having a baby together. Yeah, That's I see real. It. I, see it for I, I love do. it. I do. We, we, we raise our kids together right now. I mean, these, these, were, se these were done separately, but it's working out perfect because apparently the divine had us in mind. They're both the same age. <laughs> wow. They're both girls and they love each other and they're best friends. So like there was a bigger there was a bigger thing in happening when we got pregnant. We didn't know it yet, but yeah, we like we take our kids on vacation together. Oh my They're God. in Incredible. camp together right now. We're like, okay, honey. So what camp do you think is best for the girls? Okay, <laughs> where do, what do you think we should get the camp? Okay. Oh my God! <laughs> it's we're like, so so cute. <laughs> we, go, we went on vacation. And we're like, we're gonna have a kid free two weeks. We're like, we're gonna have to bring the kids back in August. I'm like, yeah, book the tickets right now, honey. We need this Airbnb. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, damn, we're fucking married for real. <laughs> People think we lesbians together but we really don't i mean it would be perfect if we could just lesbian together because we'd be happy not, le not if we could lesbian, lesbian together, together. <laughs> lesbian together we will lesbian separately <laughs> we have lesbian separately just not together i don't know i don't know if it will work it's good but yeah it might get a little complicated it might get complicated man. you know sex complicates things so truly. this is this is truly really keep it platonic let's keep it platonic but yeah we wanted to really talk about our tribe and just divine friendship and how important it is because I feel like it's this relationship even though it started kind of in business even though when we started a podcast we were just we didn't know we were starting a business we we're just like let's do something <laughs> um it, it, it really is it seemed to be bigger than us you know like the friendship our girls being the same age our platonic marriage so like how did you guys meet what is yours because you guys are both New York natives right yes we are i don't even know how we met to be honest we just run friends yeah we had mutual friends um i know i've been friends i think with kid fury the longest because mm -hmm. we did youtube mm -hmm. at the same time so we kind of came up at the same time and he was already friends with like crystal and jade and dustin and a lot of other our friend groups and they kind of just brought me in but i can't pick like a specific day or event i think it was just from being around each other yeah and we are kind of like the hippies of the crew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> our people. Yeah, yeah. We're like, we're very into, like our interests intersect a lot. Mm -hmm. And so we found ourselves calling each other more, seeing each other more outside of the friend group. Mm -hmm. And really, I think it's turned into just like a full blown sisterhood village Facts. outside of now a friendship. Now we live five minutes away from each other. I moved <laughs> from Harlem, which I have grew up in, lived my whole life, and moved to Brooklyn, which I never thought I would do. You're and it was crazy because I, I called her and was like, yo, I just checked out this bomb apartment. Um, I'm going to come see you. And she's like, oh, here's my address. Put it in the maps. And it was five minutes away. And mm -hmm. you were like, done. done. <laughs> and I told her, I was like, this is an apartment. Like something that, for that to have pulled me to Brooklyn. And then it's mm -hmm. five minutes from her. I didn't even question it. Moved in. Same thing with Crystal. Like, mm -hmm. Crystal so we all just kind of well. started our... Our co college campus, in a way. <laughs> <laughs> not quite dorm roomies, but down the street, right. that's close enough. Exactly. <laughs> and when I get divorced, we talk about it often. <laughs> <laughs> In that Jay, no, please. We're gonna have a Joe, cop house. You ain't leaving. No, I'm just playing. I'm just playing, babe. I'm just playing. You ain't leaving your man. I'm not, I know. I'm not. I'm a sucker. But <laughs> but we're gonna start a compound though. Yeah. Can yeah. we can we that's move into the goes. compound? Yeah, absolutely. Right? Bring your gifts. Yeah, that's all it that's all it takes. I can do eyelashes. Gifts. I'm, I'm oh, that's really, important. I'm really good at aesthetics <laughs> and dance moves. I could be I, 
I could dance in the mornings and yes. do do lashes at night. That's I my love that here for it. Here for it. Um. So. I know I was watch. I was looking at your. Um, actually, I was looking at your Instagram, and I saw this like l- super cute video that you did with Jade's daughter for yeah. Ritz, and I was like, "Oh my god, this is adorable!" Like, and that's what I talk about. Like, we talk about our tribe. Like, for example, we, we were out of town, and uh, basically, my, my whole schedule. The person I thought was going to be responsible for my child was not going to be responsible for my child. Mm-hmm. And so I really had to lean on my friends yeah. to like step in and take care because I don't have the typical setup of like a grandparent that's in the state or that's, right. you know, mm-hmm. is grandparenting. And shout out to my mom. She's an amazing grandparent, but she's also a CEO and she's very, very busy. She, she don't have time for grandma, <laughs> grandma activities like that. She she grandma t- <laughs> she but she's she's a boss in small she's, doses yeah, yeah exactly. she's like yo i got a board meeting i'm like okay um but like is that someone is, is I'm, I'm assuming fran is someone that you can you can lean on especially oh absolutely yeah. i can leave my child with fran i can leave my cat with fran <laughs> i love my cat with fran a I couple tried weeks to ago steal your cat you did. And child. She did. and then she texted me after my cat came back home it was like she's calling me from the bathroom she'd like to come over <laughs> But I can take I can take Noah over there. We were actually making plans on the way here. She's gonna take her in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Oh, perfect! Yeah, they're gonna go do activities, fishing, and yeah. a bunch of camping stuff. Amazing. Yeah, no, wow, that's nice. So I this is like this is my village. This is who I trust. My child can sleep at her house. Yeah. Like this is my village. This is my community. How do you think like your ideas of like what you look for in a friend have changed over like maybe from like your oh, your twenties to, so your, to your thirties? Mm. Like what has what was like the what was like the requirement then versus now? Not having a requirement. Yeah. I think that was the biggest shift. Yeah. For me it was like we like to party. <laughs> like you're a cute girl I'm a cute girl we like the same places bet I'll meet you there mm-hmm. and it just was more of a social friendships like I only saw you when we went out to certain places but I can't say that like you knew about what I was going through mm-hmm. or even my family mm-hmm. you know but then as I as my consciousness cracked open I started looking for different things and different people and my friend groups it was like what are we talking about? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. what are the conversations? Um, not saying that everything has to be like, what are our goals? Because sometimes you just want to chill Hell on the no. couch and watch TV. <laughs> yeah. And that's, yeah. 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 But I like to have friendships that have range. Right. You know, like I want to watch Love After Lockup on the couch mm-hmm. with you <laughs> and yep. eat gummies. But I also want to figure out how we can get Noah in a Ritz campaign. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. And, and figuring out like what tools and skill sets can I offer you for your growth and vice versa and And also spiritual growth like oh yeah i can we can get down on some good nigga shit me and fran are two hood (laughs) girls we love some good nigga shit (laughs) we love nigga jokes and (laughs) memes and gifts we text each other like problematic joke joke of the the day day. (laughs) but then on the other hand i can call fran and say bitch there was a raven outside my window for six days and we will break it down and we will talk about spirit (laughs) for hours right it's it's like a beautiful it's a beautiful range in our relationship and that's what i i feel that i'm most drawn to being able to be my full self Mm -hmm. in your presence absolutely yeah, I think that it, in your journey, like in, especially in our journey and even through this podcast, I think I've really found myself in such a major way. I think after having a child, before having a child, a lot of my identity was wrapped in um, who I was with mm-hmm. and trying to. But also I was I, I, I did have an identity, but I was still trying to figure it out. There was a lot of insecurities happening. Um, he was very he knew exactly what he who he was and what he was doing. And I felt so insecure that I didn't. Right. And so I was like, let me just elevate you because like you seem like you're doing really good over here. Mm-hmm. Um, Relatable content. Right. <laughs> <laughs> OK, hey, avoid, avoid, avoid. <laughs> You talking uh, too loud. Girl. Yeah. <laughs> um, and and then kind of stepping into, you know, this space and um, feeling really empowered and learning so much about myself as a woman outside of being a mother. Yeah. Um, has really been eye opening, but also has ma- has made a lot of people kind of fall to the wayside, too. Like you have like these casualties of like friendships. Yeah, where, absolutely. Especially ones that you're like, no, oh, no. Like looking back, especially I think of one specifically where I'm like, oh, no, this we're going to be old and gray together. Right. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, life does what it does. And it's like, oh, no, this person no longer serves you because now you're walking in a different space. Absolutely. And I'm, I, and, and I wanted to ask you, um, Fran, because I know you 
I really work a lot in the wellness space. Mm -hmm. And I know you've been in, I, I think I started following YouTube like a, like a pretty long time ago, maybe like eight or nine years ago. Yeah. Um, yeah I'm like 12 years in. And and I, I think I started following you because I was trying to figure out what the fuck to do with this hair. Sounds right. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I need some, this hair is dry. I need some <laughs> hair care tips. <laughs> And look at us now. I know, <laughs> right? Look at, right? Lord, 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 she. Look at this moisturized curl. <laughs> yes. Um, what kind of like, how did you transition from that into kind of like walking into the space that you're in now? Um, it was always, uh, like I didn't plan any of this. I definitely wasn't, because I got in the game at, in 09. Influencers and making money wasn't a thing. We were literally just like, on YouTube in our living rooms, talking to the camera, um, just for the hell of it. And for me, I had had an illness. I had been dealing with some kidney complications and was just sharing and documenting the little shifts I was making in my life to try to get better. And on Tumblr, when mm -hmm. Tumblr was like popping. And, you know, had like 100,000 followers on Tumblr. And then my friend, uh, Francesca Ramsey, known as Cheska Lee, she was already killing it on YouTube. And she was like, I think you would be so cute on YouTube. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. I'm sensitive, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what's, what's your what's sign? What's your birthday? Taurus. Oh, April oh. 24th. Oh, my God. One day before my baby. Oh, she's awesome. I know. Tell she me about your show. <laughs> tell me more. I need to know. <laughs> <laughs> oh right, I'll show you everything. <laughs> tell me about your past. Tell, tell me about your Who are you as a now. child? <laughs> what, could, what could your parents have done better? <laughs> we'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but honestly, I think the cool thing has been just staying open to all the changes. Like when Cheska Lee was like, come to YouTube, I went to YouTube. And then Kid Fury and Asante really put the bug in my ear for mm -hmm. transitioning to podcasting. And then my friend Miriam Hazanea, who's like an incredible healer and practitioner, me and her got together and started touring, getting black pra practitioners in the wellness field because they tend to be overlooked, giving them jobs. And we went on a 15, 16 city tour for three years, just nice. touring the world and bringing this information to the neighborhoods that we felt like needed the access. And so it's just staying open. Like I didn't plan any of it, but I also couldn't have designed any of this, you know, and, and just kind of like seeing what things look like, following the breadcrumbs and just going with it. And everything has just been so awesome. Mm -hmm. I love what you said about like as your consciousness cracked open. You know, I think <clears throat> sometimes you you start friendships with people since kindergarten or first grade, right. and you be friends with some people so long that you don't think twice about it. You continue to just be friends with them, and mm -hmm. you expect we're going to grow old together. And sometimes I feel like those relationships can be hindering because sometimes you believe what everybody believes about you, and mm -hmm. it doesn't give you space to grow and to explore and like. Even in this space, me and Erica were not very close before we started the podcast, like not close at all. Mm. And so we kind of like cracked open this friendship and this like our, this deepness as we talked on the podcast. But <clears throat> it took me to break away from other friendships for me to kind of stand in my own space. And like so, I, I, it sounds silly, like being an influencer and being on the Internet telling my business has brought me all my friendships. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey. <laughs> There's some, real, right, right? there's some real shit that comes with like discover like being honest about who you are and if you're honest and being authentic and then there's some i feel like there's like some kind of alert you put out into the world as you get as you get to know yourself and you're true to that divine spirit will be like i'm gonna deliver you all your people all oh, your hippie sure. tribe Absolutely. Yeah. you want to do weird shit with your friends here's your weird friend yeah we're gonna go to yeah. sex party with your friend here she goes she'll go <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know it's like, like it's, a radio frequency it is. Yes. That you're tuned it is. into and then everyone Body else starts to tuned in. and then you yeah. would th it, it sounds so silly like i have all these internet friends turn real friends but it's true and it's god mm -hmm. and like even when we left we had lunch with jade the other day and i'm like damn i love jade <laughs> i love like, y'all i'm like i knew she was our people you know I'm like, i feel like i talked to her i've seen her 400 times but it's just like constantly through podcasting just meeting our tribe i'm like damn there's something so special but i do realize it's really in releasing sometimes what you who you thought you were or what you were supposed to be or what your friends think you are because we grow and we change mm -hmm. and that's okay and sometimes if you're like 
con, con, in, con, like construct, oh God, Lord, my, my vocabulary. Like if you, if you keep yourself in the same friend group and you're not open to change, to changing or not open to meeting new people, mm -hmm. you, you rarely get to like go on full bloom and find your true tribe because you change and you grow and it's okay to like shed old relationships and gain new ones and like come into yourself more. So I think that's dope. Yeah. Well, listen, I've heard, I've heard people say all kinds of things. Jade and friends start hanging out. We started hanging out years ago, but it, now we don't kick it as much because I don't like you hoes like that no more. <laughs> I, I'll grow you. That. I outgrew you, and that's okay. You can outgrow me too. Like we just not yeah. on the same shit anymore. And I think people need to stop getting offended and lean into where they are at in life and find your own tribe. You gonna be all right. And you might spin the block on certain people. Like there are yeah. friendships that, for whatever reason, we parted ways, and then you find yourself coming back around in five, ten years. You know, maybe you had to go through some things. Mm -hmm. They had to go through some things, and you're just seeing each other in a completely different light. Same Absolutely. with relationships, friendships, family members. So I really have learned to just give grace for whatever story needs to play out, mm -hmm. you know? I think the most important thing, though, above all, is being able to be your true self in any friendship. Yeah. I don't want to have mm -hmm. to, like, pretend. I don't want to have to be, like, make you comfortable. Mm -mm. If I'd be taking my shirt off and you don't <laughs> like it. <laughs> We're not that close of friends. Right. I don't Mila know. be sending me titty pictures. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, "We're at the nude beach," <laughs> and I'm like, "I love you, hoes, so much." I love that. I love <laughs> that. Yeah. Out. Like, yeah. you know. And for a long time, I was having friends I've known for years, and I'm like, Ugh. like whispering behind my back. I'm like, "Bitch, my titty's been out since the '90s. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be my friend or not?" Like, I'm not. Like, every time I'm leaving the, the fucking hangout, I'm like, "Damn, do I need attention? Why are my titties always out? Like, do I like her, nigga? No, no, I don't." <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, damn, questioning myself and who I am and shit. Yeah. But like, it, you know your friends when you don't have to think about who you are and you can go fucking watch Love yeah. After Lockup and talk nigga shit and also be like, I need to have some inner child healing I need to do. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. I'm in a, I'll be like, I'm in a space today. And, and oftentimes we're in very similar spaces. Yeah. So then that will lead to long conversations. Right. Because we'll be trying Five to pull each other out of those spaces. Yeah. <laughs> and because it's a line like it's just God sometimes mm -hmm. you find your tribe in same spaces because it's just like oh I needed to hear this message today mm -hmm. absolutely um I know you've done like we were we were obviously Google searching you and mm -hmm. like um you there was something about you did a speech at Emory about how like science and spirituality um just intersect mm -hmm. like what what are your findings in those studies about like I mean for me I feel like it's like duh you know, like spirituality is science. Yes, mm -hmm. the same thing. It's just like <laughs> depending how you look at it. But like, what, what, are, how do you think your spirituality? You know, like, what are those some of those things you talk about in in, in that course? Uh, not course, but that speech in that talk. Yeah, I mean, I think the coolest thing for me is when you're that woo woo friend or spiritual friend. Because I respect science. I respect the woo. To me, it's a, we need all of it. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think um, there's always this resistance on either side. There to, really is. Yeah, yeah, and it's like, yeah, I don't really understand so. why they can't be integrated. And so the, the speech that I gave was really just about, you know, you'll see magazines with groundbreaking studies in science and it'll be like about your inner voice <laughs> or, like, <laughs> like or intuition. Mm -hmm. And it's like... I just wish people respected uh, ancient wisdoms for what they are and and not uh, there's so there have been so many people that have been like, I can't believe you talk about yoga or this and that. And it's the devil's worship. But and it's like no one wants to just respect different interests. So Jesus doesn't fuck with yoga, basically. I mean, the Christians <laughs> oh, yeah. online used to give me a oh, yeah, hard time me. about yoga. Mention, yeah. Yes. What? Yeah. And it became so overwhelming that I noticed I kind of would pull back mm. certain posts and then I had to check myself like, well, I'm not going to stifle my growth and my interests mm -hmm. um, because, you know, it's not being well received by the masses online. But I think science, especially I found like when I would get into that um, intuitive bag on the podcast, the science people would be like, well, I was reading this and it's just like, that's great for you, but this mm -hmm. is what I'm experiencing as my reality. And I have the right to explore that, mm -hmm. you know? Being like two women from New York and like being black women, 
what, how have you come to your hippiness? You know, like <laughs> I, I'm a very like hippie, heavy breathing, moaning type of bitch. And like, I've always <laughs> kind of just been who I am and had freedom in doing that. But like, just like you talk about people coming, like the Christians coming for you for yoga and like, yes. have, have, is that, is that, have, is that your make? Like, obviously that's your commonplace. One of your commonplaces. Is that, has that always been your, your, your upbringing or is that just something that you've, you've tapped into as an, in adulthood? I well, my parents are interesting, so they're like <laughs> hippie niggas. <laughs> they are. They always. They are. They always have been. My father was raising the projects, like. Yeah. But they, as soon as they got them some land, he grew his bamboo. <laughs> he wanted to like swim naked. Mm. He's really he's a Taurus. He is. He's right. a Taurus. My father's a Taurus, and my mother's a Virgo. <laughs> um, and it, they all of all of a sudden switched to the brown rice and the coconut oil for your joints and the apple cider vinegar and juicing the vegetables. I think I was like 12 or 13 and he came home and said, we drinking our vegetables from now on. That's what we doing. And we were like, okay, nigga. Like, <laughs> like, Where you been, Daniel? We were like, what is this? He was like, it's beets, kale, celery, apples, and carrots. And we were like, oh, okay, all right. And then like, as a treat, he would take us to Whole Foods and get us a Come wheatgrass on, a shot treat. and a red, white, and blue smoothie. Yes. So like, it's been a nice like balance with my family yes. as far as that's concerned. Um, I know my family was not into none of this shit. They, <laughs> you know, I'm from the Caribbean, um, so they they don't play with them demons. <laughs> <laughs> Some parts, you know, I my grandmother, like you know, I would witness her practices, but it was very hidden. You know, like I would wake up and have an egg in a bowl under mm -hmm. my bed, and I didn't ask questions. Mm -hmm. I was like, I trust whatever protection <laughs> she's creating for me. That's who my grandma is, but she never really got to shine fully in her practices which was unfortunate because my family just wasn't having it for the most part but I was observant and um I was just always drawn to nature even as a kid like I ended up going to a school called Manhattan Country School mm. where part of the curriculum was that you had to shear sheep and then put the wool into a loom and make a blanket Wait, or they had sheep in Manhattan? No, no, no. Oh, they would drive you to the cats. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> How's these <Okay>. sheep? <laughs> so, so part of the year you're in the school. Unless you're then, in the Bronx. Oh somewhere in the Bronx. Sometimes they got children. I mean, and shit. most of us have in our backyard. But, <laughs> but you have, you know, part of the curriculum, you're in Manhattan. And then the other part, you're in the cat skills on the farm. Mm. And you had to learn life skills. I had to wake up at five AM at like thirteen years old, go into the chicken coop because house we have made breakfast you know and making clothes for each other and I was just like this is awesome because I'm a, you know I just got out of the projects what when I was 26 like yeah. I'm not that far <laughs> removed <laughs> and so to have those experiences and even the summers in the Caribbean like I just always had it around me and very quickly uh could see that I can play in all worlds like you put me in in fast-paced, highly successful boss mode, I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. But you put me in nature to just be in silence, I'm going to do it. And I feel called to absolutely everything. But now, as I'm getting older, the calling is shifting where I'm less interested in um, the markers of success that people tend to look for, and it's more of an internal success. Like, I love how beautiful my friendships are. My partnership is amazing, working on relationships with my mom, <laughs> And to me, those markers of success are way more interesting to me as of late. And so I'm just kind of going in that direction. Mm -hmm. Following your intuition. Yeah. That's, right. That's why I'm headed to Oregon in the fall. I'm leaving New York. You're moving? Yeah. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get my land and just chill out. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank so you. Amazing. I appreciate That's that. That's so beautiful. Mila, so we just went to Costa Rica, like we said, and we had a sim well, I think it's the beginning of a shift for us. Mm -hmm. Um and I was telling Mila when we were there, because when we were there, we were like, Man, like we don't you don't really need a lot you really to live don't. a good life. Yeah. To be happy. Yeah. Like <clears throat> these the people on the, out there are just they're so beautiful they're so vibrant and they don't have all the things that I'm sometimes I feel like I'm working so hard for these benchmarks and success they're or not these, even ours or these items that I'm yeah. not gonna die with or like providing certain things for my child that I don't she doesn't even give a fuck you yeah. know <laughs> truly you know she just I'm wants like, your attention yeah girl I and threw her a birthday party oh my god I spent so much money and she just was like. 
And face. just wanted to play in the pool. I yeah. was like, but look at this, and look at this, and this, and See, this. See, that's why I don't do that no more. Right, I think right. I'm done. I'm we done. go to the park and have a barbecue. <laughs> I had a blast. <laughs> yeah. I had a blast, yeah. Um, but yeah, and like, I think I was telling her when we were there, I was like, it's so easy to come back to your fast-paced life and kind of forget the feeling that you felt while you were there. And right. I know I've done it. I've done it at least 10 times. I know I've gone to different places and been like, this is it. Like, I can feel it. And then I come home and I'm right back into the mix. I mean, it's so easy to jump back in. And I think one thing, my my best friend, shout out to Claude Kelly. We've been friends since we were like preteens. And he became a millionaire really early. I think he was like probably 20. Damn. Oh, wow. And I was like, whoa. And we were both like, yo. <laughs> <laughs> he was like writing for Kelly Clarkson and Britney Spears. And his mm -hmm. life just changed. And I remember going from like us splitting a salad <laughs> and, and jumping over turnstiles on the train to him being like, yo, you got to see my new crib. And it was like overlooking, you know, the city. This lake. And it was just yeah. like, I remember looking at him and we both cried because it was like, you made it. But then very quickly, it was like, what did I make exactly? Right. Because he mm -hmm. realized this actually didn't make me feel any different. I was just happy to change how I'm being perceived. Mm. Like it, it changed how I move in a room because now everyone's like, oh, he made it. So it was that question of who are you actually doing this for and how does it actually feel at the end of the day? Mm -hmm. And he gave all that up. Wow. Now he lives in Nashville mm -hmm. in like a little gated community with his dog and he's chilling. He doesn't write for artists anymore because he realized that those benchmarks were really for everyone else. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to create a life that was, as my friend Haas says, less of a to-do list and more of a to-feel list. Mm -hmm. And that shift is very subtle. But it and it and it's funny because now everyone's like, oh, you fell off. What happened to you, bro? And he's like, fell off. <laughs> like, I'm actually like in my bag, but it's just a very different bag mm -hmm. than what people want to see and are expecting. And it's very brave, which is sad. It's brave to walk away from that program. It's, it's super brave. It's mm -hmm. very because brave. So many people will tell you you're crazy. Absolutely. There'll be a very small group of people that are going to support you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, especially if you are ident identify who you are based on how people perceive you, then you're fucked. Kind of. Oh, you, you're going to be chase you're, you're going to come back from every vacation and be like, yeah, yeah, back to it. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be tired on a soul level because it's a wheel that you cannot ever catch up to. And, you know, and speaking about like coming back and I was telling her, I was like, I, 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 I want to hold us accountable. Like, how do we hold each other accountable to stay in that? To stay in yeah. that. And like, how, yeah. how do you guys hold each other accountable in your friendship? Like, what are some of the ways that maybe like you guys check in with each other and be like, girl, like you said you were going to do this. And you weren't really doing that. <laughs> <laughs> do, we, do we do that? Or you guys um, maybe in different ways. I can't say that we do. We hold each other accountable in different ways. Like Jay don't sleep. No. So sleep. I'm no. always like, like a night owl or something. She just don't yes, sleep. And I like do um, I do a lot of things. Yeah. She's always things. on the run between she, business, mommy, being a wife. There's so many hats that she wears and mm -hmm. she doesn't get rest. And so if anything, I'm the accountability is just like, are you nourished? Mm -hmm. You know, like is your body do you have the capacity to even Feet, like do all these things on a yes, weekly basis. She does do this because she'll be on <laughs> on fumes. This is my twentieth recording of the week. Twentieth? Yeah. She's not exaggerating. That's no, the thing. That That's is. crazy. She's not doing exaggerating. A lot of talking. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know why niggas still listening. I'm real honest <laughs> with you. But I am like on my because we're leaving. So I'm right. like, okay, we got to double up on. Then we got a project in a couple weeks. Yeah, and we're having this meeting, and I, that's why I got on that bitch yesterday, getting my hair braided. Right. I was like, all right, well, we're gonna hammer through these details. This doesn't change anything. Everybody carry on. Right. Like, <laughs> you know. And it's just I'm moving, moving. So she's very good about being like, did you? Eat, eat, or go have to sleep. Have you had water? Mm. Have you done this? <laughs> and then Fran doesn't really cook. She can, but she doesn't. Uh, yeah, so, I'm a lady of leisure. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> she Me will too. eat <laughs> Sour yeah. Patch Kids like for the <laughs> evening <laughs> <laughs> and some kettle chips. So I'd be like, let's She's get dinner. Lying. I'm gonna get us meals. I'm gonna get us <laughs> no, like I'm a tourist. Don't act like I eat. I know, no, you don't That's eat anything. That's just an inside joke with us and Crystal. <laughs> but 
<laughs> but I, my partner is a cook. Yes, he loves he to cook, so I'm very blessed because I'm like, yes, enjoy. Look at you manifest it. So, <laughs> I, I, it happened actually because you said that you were like, I need somebody who cooks, and, and that's exactly what he I makes got. Restaurant, and he shit. loves to cook, and it's his love language. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what a blessing that he gets excited to feed me because right. I'm a tourist who loves to eat and send pictures of his. Wait, because hold up, my daughter's my daughter's a tourist, and she is picky as. Fuck. Okay. Really? I, I'm like, tourists love to eat what? We love food. She's gonna come into her own I with hope this. So. Right. Child, yeah. okay. <laughs> Don't worry. She's gonna hit it's you with this wow. It's been the same like five things for about three and a half years. I'm like, that'll change. It very will. Quickly. She's six. Yeah. She. It's coming. Don't even worry about it. Don't even worry about it. They change so much. <laughs> Yeah, I think there's hope for you. Don't worry. <laughs> I hope so. Uh, my bougie ass daughter is a muscle crab eating fucking. Yeah, oh, I, should, I, I took her that. daughter to dinner the other night, eating. and we were at this like you know fancy little restaurant, and she she was hell bent on the muscles. I was trying to like, steer her away. <laughs> it was like the most. It was like the expensive shit on there. I was like, you sure you don't want this? <laughs> She's like, Mm-mm, I want She's muscle. She's like, I know what I want. I was like, <laughs> meanwhile, my daughter's like, do they have plain spaghetti? <laughs> I'm like, fuck. <laughs> Cool that muscles. So I right. love that. Did she want it in a white wine sauce? Yeah, that's not bougie. Ass. She did. It was white wine that's sauce. Awesome. And then I was like, the server was looking at me because it's literally one of the ingredients. And I was like, show the muscles in white wine. And he's like, wine six. Yeah. I'm like, he's he cooked. Said that? He's, cooked. I could just tell he was looking at me like, or maybe I was looking at myself. Chop, chop, nigga, put the know, order in. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you go get the order. It's probably cooked up. The alcohol. I bet is she ate all out. that shit too. Um, I have a question because uh, you said you have a partner. Jade, mm-hmm. you're married. Um, me and Jamila are both single. Uh, last year, we happened to fall upon... <laughs> We're the same person because I was literally about to ask this same yes. shit. <laughs> oh, see, look. We happened to fall upon boyfriends last year. They're no longer our boyfriends. I love that. Yeah. I happened to fall upon. I love those. <laughs> our, our manifestations are, je- are oddly on the same we, time. We did. We manifested boyfriends. We wrote it down. Specifically, like, what we wanted. We weren't detailed enough. There were a lot of missing, uh, like, bullet points. And you got tired <laughs> of them at the same time as yep, well. Yep. <laughs> Well, they expired <laughs> on the same time. Expired literally, like within weeks, they both expired. Um, <laughs> Strong six month relationship. It happens, um, it and uh, and then last, like in May, I, I was like done with niggas, and I was like, I'm going, I'm celibate, I'm or I'm abstaining from sex. Oh, yeah, I, I was that. like, I'm cool. I'm like, actually, it was before May, but that's when I actually I asked our, my community to join me. Um, wait, wait, before you proceed, okay. I just want to know because I didn't really like that boyfriend very much. He got on my motherfucking nerves. I know. And I, <laughs> <laughs> there was there was tension. I was like, oh, he's coming over. Oh, yeah, he'll come in. I was like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have you ever, I know you're married, but like, have you ever dated anyone that you just did not fuck with, Jade? Mm-mm. Uh, no. Uh, Mm-mm. It's always been kosher. I mean, the only one that was the oh. cuckoo bird, but, but mm-hmm. he was so busy um that he didn't really get to be yeah. around a lot of my friends this is also a, a similar we'll talk after <laughs> <laughs> oh, and yeah, he no. was just like you know larger than life personality and it was a housecape of a relationship yeah. but a luckily house-cape? i mean it was just rough oh what, what, what yeah housecape what does that mean oh hellscape, hellscape. oh hellscape, hellscape. yeah not housecape. Uh-huh. and my friends luckily i kept them pretty separate like that's how yeah. bad it was so i just wish bad things on them now but <laughs> right. and that, that was what i was getting to was because I, I told i've told all my friends now because i don't I was like, I don't trust myself. I mean, I mean, I trust myself, but also like, I feel like my friends need to interview any nigga that comes up. I'm like, uh, I think my friends, my my man or my possible man needs to go through like a filter of friends <laughs> first uh, to yeah. make sure yeah. that process. it's right and like the dick is not blinding me yes. That's and amazing. like the f- affection or whatever and the fuck he's giving me is yeah. not blinding me because mm-hmm. and that's really why I went on that abstaining journey was because I realized that sex was was really confusing me and like mm-hmm. making me like people that I did not like like one hour before mm-hmm. right um so is that important to you like is like your friends obviously getting along with your partner getting along with your friends because sometimes people are like perfectly happy keeping it separate like this is my separate life i'll be honest i it doesn't i don't think it's something i need for my friends to like my partner or even be integrated to be honest the partner i have now that's really the this is the first time that i have a partner who is friends with my friends yeah. like they have each other's numbers yeah, we be texting. they text talk but doesn't, that feel, but doesn't that feel like in some way some sort of um i don't know it feels good 
it, it's actually it's been challenging for me really because i've been so used to keeping those worlds separate mm. um that now i'm like oh okay because i <laughs> the thing is like i i have i always preferred being able to have a clean cut if i want to leave you Oh, right. You so is that why you kept, is that why you kept it separate? It was just always easier for me because mm-hmm. I always viewed my relationships like I'm just now coming into like really enjoying monogamy and like fully trusting and like melting into each other in a lot of ways. Whereas before I always had kind of a wall up in my relationships where it was like, I'm still you're on audition, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, constant audition. And I never really I can't say that I was with someone that I felt like you should be integrated into the fiber of my life. Mm-hmm. I just didn't feel that way about anybody. Same for me. Before Tristan, I did not introduce anybody to anybody. Yeah, no. Never. My friends didn't meet anybody I was dating, fucking nothing. They were just like I mean, she got business, you know, <laughs> and so when he started coming around, we were like, oh, you know, like, okay, <laughs> all right, she got a partner. And so now he like will hang sometimes and then sometimes yeah. he doesn't. We go on our trips and he's not always there. Mm. He's actually hardly ever there. Yeah. yeah. I see him when I come over, but <laughs> yeah. outside of that, yeah, I don't think it's, I think um, some people, men are are very central to their existence Mm -hmm. like it's like their their lives revolve around that thing Mm -hmm. and i've just never been that type of person for me it's like my relationships were an aspect of my existence um and now i'm learning to like what that looks like when our lives do intersect Mm -hmm. like friends family even business like I've, I'm like, oh, this is new, because mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. it's safe. It's a safe relationship. I feel very secure, mm-hmm. and we have such a strong friendship first, which I think was the piece that was always missing. Where it's like, I like you, I actually like, like you. I like you, I fuck with you. Yeah, that's like true. if you Outside weren't my partner, I'd we'd probably be friends. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. to me, that's super cool because I actually want him around for things. I want him to come. Things feel weird if he's not there. Right. And I think that that's cool because it's very new for me. That's cool. That's exciting. You're yeah. walking into a new space. Yeah. I think for me, um, it's not imp- necessarily, it's not a requirement. It just does make life a little easier. I think it only highlighted it for me really because in none of my friends' life. <laughs> and, 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 and it wasn't even, yeah. it, it was like the immediate, like the first impression with every single one <laughs> like, was oh, like, hell. it was something was going wrong. And I was like, damn nigga, can you just, just <laughs> like, no. <laughs> like, I wasn't going to bring you. Like, let me see his picture. I want to look at his eyes. Oh, you're going to be crazy, bitch. They look a little crazy. Friends, no, I ask everybody, but let me see a picture. I want to see their eyes. I you. That's a legitimate question. You got to look people in the eyes. Oh, usually absolutely. the crazy is in the eyes. Well, you know what? I went against Always. my intuition because he had been kind of like trying to date me for a while. And I was like, Mm-mm, no, you look, a little, you look a little corny. I don't know. And then COVID hit. <laughs> And, and you bitch was like, got bored. You had a COVID boyfriend. The COVID, the COVID goggles. The COVID goggles I was came on. Like, Hell fine. <laughs> Don't do that, ladies. Don't ever find yourself into a relationship. <laughs> but the abstaining piece, because I actually abstained for four years. Wow. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. For my partner and I, um, we actually dated years ago. And parted ways just because our lives were headed in two completely different directions. Um, the Hey Fran Hey stuff was like getting really heavy in my business. And I just didn't have the I didn't have the presence to give and he didn't have the presence to give. Mm-hmm. So we we actually had like a breakup picnic. Oh, and funny enough, it was on Fourth of July. So it was like Independence Day. Peace out. <laughs> <laughs> Very telling. And but it was funny because that's just who we were. It was like there's no beef. Let's just sit and talk about the ways that we grew with each other, the things that we would offer as advice on things that might help you in the future. Mm -hmm. And parted ways, did not talk for like four or five years and bumped into each other on the street. And it was just like, hey. Wow. (laughs) And this time we had the capacity. And so everything's very different. And I don't know that I would have had that clarity if I hadn't taken those four years to kind of like clear all the energy that was in my body of everybody else Mm. and really knowing like, what does, what do I feel like? Mm -hmm. Like just me without the gaze of anyone else. Mm -hmm. I would imagine though too, like even like breaking the abstinence too, like is something like, 
overwhelming. Uh, yeah, and overwhelm, especially if you've been doing it for four years. Like, Absolutely, because I had to kind of catch myself because I was like, I'm going to end up making this a bigger thing than it needs right. to be because then you're like, you don't deserve it. And it's like, well, I don't want to be 100 years old. Like, <laughs> you know, still at home. Like, no one deserves it. <laughs> Cobweb. But, yeah, like, I'm still a young that woman that should be having fun and experiencing. So I was like, okay, don't make this a thing, Frank, because once it hit four years... <laughs> I wasn't planning on mm -hmm. that long, but it's just like what was being asked of me physically. And I just kind of went with it. And yeah, when I finally broke that, it was like, whoa. <laughs> Dang. Damn, you know, but it was the yeah, clarity. We yeah, we do. We look, look at Fred. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's so nice to see. He's like, look at her glowing. Look at her glowing. Check out her stuff. Right. So, it, but it was so wonderful because it's like, I spent so much time with myself, which I feel like I had never done. I think that's a big part of, too, about, like, you know, knowing how to cultivate friendships is really also knowing how to cultivate the friendship with yourself. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, like, that's the foundation of all the other ones. Because mm -hmm. so, so often we, we, we avoid ourselves, like I was saying, in my, in my relationship yeah. and even in friendships. We avoid ourselves in friendships early 20s avoiding ourselves just let's go out let's go out let's not talk about shit let's just do this and even in our 30s and 40s and 50s people are still avoiding oh, for sure, mm -hmm. yeah. in, in friendships it's so it's so easy to do that I mean I, I don't know I think um I, I look at my daughter now and um I'm like how what tools do I give you now right. to like offset <laughs> some of this shit the escapism that we all can fall into so easily in adulthood like, yeah and I love escapism I'm a fan yeah. of it I think yeah. it's just a matter of time <laughs> it's, <amazing laughs> it's you know like COVID I had to play into escapism quite a lot because it yeah. was like holy shit yeah. like, what is going on in the world and, and just trying to like keep your equilibrium but mm -hmm. I think the it's like less about feeling bad about when you need to and just kind of acknowledging that you have a lot of different um, parts of you that need to be tended to. And sometimes it is just sitting and watching Love Have to Lock Word. Up for 10 hours straight yeah. if that's the numbing feel that you just need. And then I kind of reel myself in like, all right. You know, that was fun. Right. <laughs> Go read yeah, a book. It's been six hours, bitch. <laughs> right. Or two they, days. they are not going to make it. <laughs> right. <laughs> but having less shame for yes. the processes. You know, like, I don't always want to process shit. Sometimes I just, like, don't want to think. Yeah. I always say that. I always say, like, if you're going to do some shit, you're going to escape. If you're going to dive into the whatever it is you want to do, the fantasy, just do it fully and enjoy it right yes. don't do that weird freaky shit yes. quietly and then be guilting yourself after because yes. you, you won't even really enjoy it's the true. weird shit you know whatever it is that you're doing that you're indulging in it's like do it give yourself permission to enjoy it whether it don't judge yourself really and then keep it moving yeah I, i've never heard anyone say um I, you know i was celibate because i needed to get I needed to. I didn't. What did you say? I needed to like clear clear my all the all of that energy oh, out yeah. of me. Oh my god! All and, those men's thoughts of me. Yeah. And I was like, who am I outside of relationships? And then it was also that feeling of like, how can I tell a man what I need if I haven't even cultivated what I need with myself? Like I didn't know. I didn't know what felt good to me. And so it's like, I can't have that conversation with someone else before solidifying what that feels like and sounds like and looks like. And those four years were really like the best relationship I've ever had. Cause it was like, Fran really got to just like pour in. And now I'm so clear, like my boundaries, mm -hmm. my capacity, but I wouldn't have been able to have the language for that if I didn't set the time aside to create that. And now I'm very clear, like my partner, he always says, I know exactly who I'm with. Because <laughs> it's like certain things he'll last. It's like, no. And there's no need for an explanation. Like, mm. there's no guilt. Because mm. it's like, this is just where I'm at. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, I think every woman, especially because we tend to, like, put ourselves on the back burner to nurture everyone else a lot of times. Mm -hmm. It's good to be able to say no and to be very boundary and not feel bad and not feel guilty. And I love it. This is probably why it's my favorite relationship because he's just like, okay. <laughs> He'll just I laugh and be like, know. it's me, hey, friend. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it's just funny at this point. That's also a good foundation for a lot of our friendships, too, is that yes. with the brutal All honesty, the it's like, hey, I'm not feeling it today. My energy is off. Like, And we're very, we honor how we feel. And the other person fully understands that. And I think that's a beautiful part because you've got too many people out there who are 
in their feelings about little things. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't hang tonight. Well, what does that mean? You can't hang out with me. We (laughs) haven't seen each other in three weeks and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. But we have a a clear understanding, which is really nice, so that we can, and a clear understanding of what we need. And then because we operate in that same space, it just makes things flow so much easier. Yeah, I love that. Mm -hmm. The the honesty is so key. Even like when you, like, sometimes even when someone's like, oh, I can't do this. And you're like, well, is it me? Like, did I do something? Right. Am I like, are they thinking something about me? Like, not not, like, not internalize. And not internalize Mm -hmm. shit. And Mm -hmm. sometimes, like, I even have shout out to Jessica Rose um, and another, like, friend we met through the internet. But, like, we had a conversation and she was just like, I'm so strange. Like, you know, I'll hang out with you and Erica and then I'll leave and be like, do they like me? I'll be like, oh my God, I do that too. I'm like, bitch, I'll be thinking the same thing. Like, am I here too long? Did I eat all her food? Is she mad? Is she mad I ate all the bananas? I'm going to buy you some more bananas, Erica. She'll be like, okay. Did I eat all the bananas? me at your house. I know it is. She's like, I ate all your food. I'm like, I just ate all your snacks. I'm sorry. That's what it's for. But it's like, even even having the the freedom to be like, I'm in my head. I'm tripping. Yeah. Or like, this is bothering me. Let me just say it. Or mm-hmm. like, you know, whatever it is. And for Jessica to tell me that, I'm like, I do the same shit. It's and I'm real. so glad it's not just me being a fucking weirdo in my <laughs> head. And I'm so glad that we're from the same weirdo tribe that we could talk about the weird shit going on in our head. And mm-hmm. it's not a thing. And she'd be like, I'm really having an anxiety attack right now. Please don't come over. I'm like, cool. I'll, I'll hit you tomorrow with the wine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll save the wine for tomorrow. I love that. You though. know, but yeah, it's like sometimes we do that too. Yeah, especially like, um, being from the hood and our levels of education and access, a lot of the times we battle imposter syndrome with opportunities. And it's like, you know, you see the academics and the intellectuals mm-hmm. and you're like, whoa, I can't really box in the ring. Mm-hmm. Come on, these. bitch, I got a GED. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, and, it's like, and it's like, but also honoring that you have a place mm-hmm. in, in, this, in these spaces mm-hmm. and your voice is just as valuable even if you didn't go to this school and meet up with this person and read this many books it's like we can be hard on ourselves and i think we've had that convo of just Mm -hmm. supporting each other like we might just have different language Mm -hmm. but it doesn't take away from the value of it needing to be heard and i think in our friendships we definitely like push each other to like break through whatever limitations we might create in our own minds absolutely that's amazing. Yeah, that that's so true. I just uh, like as as women, as black women, I, I think there is, there is a, a doubt, and there is a you know you put yourself last always, and, always, and and. and, and it takes village to be like, nah, girl, that's your shit, right? Yeah. You killed that shit, and you're supposed to be here, and you deserve to be here, and like, it means so much. Mm-hmm. And like, channeling shit from your friends. Like, mm-hmm. there's things about myself that are like, Erica's cut off queen. She can like make boundaries so easily. So sometimes when I'm like standing up for myself, I'm like, I'm gonna just channel my little bit, of Erica, right now. <laughs> <laughs> Nope. <laughs> can't do it. No, I just can't. Uh-uh. And then sometimes I'm like, I'm like, oh, I don't want to talk to nobody, but I know I should talk. Oh, look, they're still, they look so nice. I know I want to be their friend, but like, I don't know how. And I'm like, what would Mila do? I'd be like, hey, girl, hi, so what's up? I'm awkward, but hey. <laughs> what? Hi. Yeah. And then they're like, is she okay? <laughs> It's just a little different today. <laughs> no, we do that too because I think we, we joke. Y'all jokingly will be like, "I'm on my hey friend, hey shit." When they just taking naps or yeah. like eating snacks yeah. and caring for themselves. Mm-hmm. And then Jade is is a lot more outspoken than mm-hmm. I am. Like, you know, she'll fight someone. On the street. Well, yeah. <laughs> and and there's a part of me that's always like Jade, but then it's like I appreciate how if she's uncomfortable, she's gonna let you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm and so about. I take on that sometimes too when I know I have to speak up and I might not have it I'll like channel Jade's energy Mm -hmm. and I think we all in our friendship group kind of have little pieces of each other that we we empower each other Mm -hmm. in ways that maybe like aren't natural necessarily to us but we know that we we need to do that Rand helps me with my own boundaries because I'm I got clear boundaries with strangers very clear but with people I love I'm I, I'll try to do whatever. Watery. Yeah, I'm like, I'm real. I try to be really, uh, what's the word? What were we talking about? Uh, uh, accommodating. Mm. Right. But like sometimes too much so to the point where it's depleting me. Mm. Yeah. And so she's really good about being like, no, not feeling it today, which has been a really nice example. So when I'm not feeling it and I'm feeling guilty about not feeling it, I'm start, I'll am i channel, I'll be like, <laughs> all right, 
no, you know what? No, I can't, I don't have it today. I don't have it. <laughs> and then you find that other people are, you know, they understand yeah, a lot yeah, more. Yeah. It's your own shit. It's your you know own. Yeah. They'd be like, yeah. oh my god, they're gonna be so hurt. They're gonna be so upset. And, oh my god, and they're, they're not. Me. And they're literally and they're like, not. okay, girl. They're like, good. Bad. I'm actually glad you canceled, bitch. You need to go to sleep. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, it's good. Um, just the last thing, um, because I know you got to get out of here, but um. I, I I was telling we were t- we were having a conversation with some other ladies and we were talking about how oftentimes we forget to tell the people that we love in our tribe like that we love them or like sh- shouting out like our favorite thing about them. So like I just want to take a second and I want to know what you guys like. Fran, what is your favorite thing about? Oh, Jay, Jay, Aww. what's your favorite thing about Fran? I'm gonna tell Mila what my favorite thing about her That's is. So sweet. <laughs> I love this. Um, it's a love fest. And I want to encourage you guys at home, too, to do the same. Like, call up your homie and tell them because yeah. they need to hear the shit. Hell yeah. Yeah, real. Um, honestly, I think I'm amazed at how good Jade is at so many things. Like, she's an incredible mother, an incredible wife, an incredible entrepreneur, and somehow... All of these things are just like staying afloat in the most miraculous ways and everything's thriving. And I think it's hard. And I know you might feel overwhelmed. Because <laughs> it's hard, you know, and we try to support you as much as we can. But I know it's still hard at the end of the day. But I still am always in amazement at like her capacity, you know, her capacity to love and give and grow and support. Her daughter is like, so awesome oh my god you know such a reflection such a mirror of her heart you know her heart literally walking out in the world and i just like in in pure admiration because i'm just i'm not married or have kids and i'm exhausted half the time (laughs) at just like existing (laughs) so i'm (laughs) like how do you add like two more people to that (laughs) you know so i think i'm in amazement at um I don't want to say the superwoman trope because I feel like we take that on and it can actually be pretty burdensome. Mm. But I think I love watching you navigate who you are and what's needed and what you need and just figuring it out as you're going along while everything is thriving. And it's just like the coolest thing to witness. You're like such an awesome mom and wife and everything. It's just cool. Because I'm like, I, I hope I can do that too. No, you be doing it. My favorite thing about friend, <laughs> friend, and this is not, I'm not putting her business out there. She's talked about these things. Mm-hmm. Fran has had uh, not the easiest growing up experience. Yeah. Yeah. And to know um, as, as one of my closest friends, like to know the details and the depths of those things and to see what a beautiful light she is to like so many people around her, Thanks. our family, our <laughs> village, her own mother, like everybody who comes in contact, Fran is a beam of light. She's got beautiful things to offer and to know where she came from and what she's exuding into the world, I think is such an amazing thing. Thank you. Oh, I got that in my heart. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mila. <laughs> Jamila to some, Mila to me. I don't know, you're Jamila or Mila. It depends what day it is. Um, God, there's so many things I do love about you, babe. Like, oh, <laughs> you know, I can't be crying. crying and shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mila is is also a light. Like everywhere she goes, people are like just are like gravitate towards her, and she somehow has space for so much. Yeah, and. Um, somehow is able to like fully give so much like she doesn't pick and choose like she's able to fully give and love with limitless capacity like that I don't I don't truly understand myself because I'm kind of a bitch sometimes I'll be like <laughs> no nah, can't like she, you know she says I have boundaries and sometimes those boundaries get in the way I think yeah true. and so she is such a natural healer too people are so gravitated to her to her and she's a natural healer um, she's an amazing mother and her daughter is a reflection of her too. Luna is a little, I don't want to say a little Jamila because she is her own soul, but I see so much of her in you and her spirit and you're such an amazing friend. I know that I can call you at any time, any hour. You're like, what's up? What should we doing? <laughs> <laughs> and I can just depend on you. And, um, I, I know that God, for some reason, put you in my life to, 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 to be on this journey with one another and there's literally no one in the <laughs> world I would rather be on this journey with. So I love Oh like, my god. god. <laughs> oh look at her. Oh. <laughs> I could cry over like Lion King. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> um, you know, keep, okay, also keep in mind, me and Erica have been on literally in close proximity on vacation. We're on our third week. <laughs> We've been together incredible. for four fucking weeks. So now I know I'm still in the same room. That's right? impressive. <laughs> um, yeah, like that says a lot. I know we're getting on each other's nerves, but you know, Erica, like, I needed you. I did. And I have a lot of friends. I am, I'm a friend magnet ass bitch. <laughs> um, but I really needed this friendship. And you you do all you're so of the, so much of the things that I'm not. And so much of the things that I need in our business, you get shit done. That boss ass bitch. I don't know how you do all of the shit, <laughs> but she's she gets the shit done. I'll be like, I want to do some shit, but I'll sit on the sun button for like 25 hours like why didn't I send that email? No fucking clue. <laughs> um, and and even for someone who says they didn't want to be a mom, like I, I, one of the things that I channel from you all the time is you're incredibly patient. You know, you're inc incredibly patient with your daughter and with our daughters and with me. And like, that's not easy. You know, like kids are fucking annoying <laughs> and you are incredibly patient. Sometimes I look over, I'm like, how is she so fucking calm? Right. Does she not hear this? I'm like, I need to chill out. I need to smoke, you know? Um, <laughs> But it's true. Like I, 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 I'm always in awe of you. All the things you do, and not just do them, but do them in in completion, and do them at, right. to the best of your ability. And like we, we do, do a lot of stuff. And I, and I'm like, bitch, you need to step up your game. Erica is fucking doing the things and sending the emails. Right. So you know, I just, I'm so grateful for you and for our business and for our like our little family <laughs> <laughs> and our, our marriage. And there is nobody else I'd rather travel the world with and share our bank account with. And <laughs> oh. and and just your way of always like I'm such a sensitive can cancer clearly and you always have a way of being completely straightforward with me but also being gentle like bitch you're fucking up but give me a hug I love you <laughs> so you're like I, you could do better but I, I love you and I understand and I Aww. I do I appreciate you so much and I love you I love you too. what a blessing <laughs> no, it is. we share guides I tell friend that all the time I'd be like your guides was in the room with me mm -hmm. oh my god yes <laughs> mm -hmm. yes all the time as kooky as it may sound right. some, but we definitely have some ancestral connection yeah, somewhere yeah, yeah we do sure. for sure That's it's true and like th there's such thing and even us all being you know black women in like a a space where we're we're obviously in tune with mm -hmm. spirit you know and that's not that's not something a privilege everyone's given to be tapped into that but so we find each other and i think like that's so special and important you know even the time i sacrificed those two pigeons <laughs> you still <laughs> you were looking at me crazy <laughs> but you love me and understood and we're like, not what? laughing for obvious reasons no it's, it's a relatable concept yeah. <laughs> you know and it's just like who else could i tell i sacrificed two pigeons <laughs> And somebody's in the back room, and they still they still ride with me, you know. <laughs> I got you, so bitch. Funny. Yo, it's so fucking funny. <laughs> so oh funny. I love that. I think that is amazing. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm about to cry. Like, <laughs> I'm not gonna hold you. That shit just took me out. <laughs> really. uh, thank you guys so much for coming and sharing your friendship with us yeah, and thank stepping you for into our space and letting our audience like come step into your friendship. Um, for all the women out there, especially the black women, like step into your friendships, the ones that feel good and feel authentic, where you can be your truest self, where you could like zip up, get naked and, and like physically and spiritually just come as you are and not feel judged, like lean into that shit and tell those people you love them and, yes. and hug those people and like heavy moan together because I'd be doing that shit all the time. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And date your, date your friends. <laughs> date your yeah, friends, date court your, your friends. friends. We send each other f just thinking to you flowers. Yeah. We have date night. Yeah, where it's like, well, we need quality time too. You right, know, yeah. we'll go see a movie, we'll go to dinner, we'll go for walks. Mm -hmm. She randomly texts me like, "You want to go for a walk?" And like, mm -hmm. we'll just do that. It's like, I Sometimes love I order too many things off anthropology. And, and she'll bring me stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah she'll be like, I saw this. It looks like you because we dress the same. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's just nice to uh give our friendships the same amount of love and attention that we would our partnerships yeah. but i think sometimes Amen. we we forget to do that yeah. yeah Amen. i think a lot of times yeah, yeah. so that's a really that's maybe that's the affirmation i give my friends as much time love and attention as i give niggas yeah. <laughs> i love that actually I'm getting a tattoo <laughs> Let's all get it together. <laughs> it's better Friendship. than fucking niggas get money. Yes. <laughs> we did just get tattoos together. Oh, we did. It's oh, official. Oh, yeah. I love that. Fine. Um, well, tell tell our people where to find you. Um, I'm a hey friend, hey across the board, every platform. If your hair is dry, 
You know where to you find know where right? Look at those, <laughs> those YouTubes from years ago. They're right. still they're still they accurate. Are still they are there. still there. <laughs> I'm not still there, but the videos are. <laughs> uh, Jade of all Jades across all platforms. Mm -hmm. And I love you all. Thank you so much. We love you. We love you guys. Thank you. And you know where to find us. We're on Instagram, Good Moms underscore Bad Choices. Um, you can check our Patreon out. You can watch it if you go to Patreon.com backslash Good Moms Bad Choices. You can't search us. We're explicit, um, but not really. We are just do what we want. <laughs> um, and rate and review this episode because you niggas be listening for free you could at least do that thanks <laughs> <laughs> alright we'll catch you guys next week bye bye <laughs>